uh, real pump curve here. And you can see that the pump curve, when you are selecting a, a, a pump, uh, most often to the same uh, pump, you can have different size of impellers. So if we, we, we fill it, the specification data sheet, we ask it for a quotation. When the supplier returns to you with a pump curve, ask, ask them to add all the, the impeller size that are, are possible, or at least the next bigger and the next smaller. Because eventually, if consider this pump here, so re reconsider that today we are running the process with two, uh, 12 cubic meters per hour, and I have the head of 20 Celsius uh, meters of cooling uh, column of water. And for any reason, I need to, to the body neck my process and I need to increase the, the, the I need to increase the volume flow of my system to 16. If I use the same pump, the, the, the head available in this pump will uh, decrease to uh, 25 MCA, for instance. And as I increase the flow, in fact, I am increasing the pressure of the, uh, the, the pressure drop of the system and my point of, uh, of my system will not be here anymore. Okay, it will be different. So uh, eventually, instead, I, I, if I have uh, margin to my pump to change the impellers, I can, you, I can consider uh, having the same pump by only buying another impeller and now use this curve here. Of course, that I need to build the, the system curve. You already, did, you already see how to do that in Aspen High Seas. So uh, if we, uh, my pump is if I select the pump with the, the, the biggest impeller, if I need to increase the, the volume and I need to increase the head, I will not have margin for that and I will need to buy a totally new pump. So it, this is the, the thing that I want you to observe. Try to have a pump that you can have some kind of margin to do some kind of adjustment and don't lose the pump that you already bought. And uh, so with, okay, so we have here the, the, the curves according to each size in impeller size. So we have, you see here, blue is uh, 148 millimeters, 135 millimeters, 190 millimeters. So we have seen that uh, the power increases as we increase the impeller because now we have more head. It's for the same flow, we have the more head. So we are increasing the power needed to run your, your pump. In the NPSH, this is the required NPSH, increases with the increasing flow. So we have here uh, the in in increment. So we need to verify here, for instance, we have six MCA, six meters of water column. So as I am uh, NPSH available of 12, no problem. Uh, it's not the pump again, but just for reference, you, it is this kind of thing that you will evaluate in a pump curve. And you have the shaft power also related to the curve. So as I told you, if I, I, my pump runs as at uh, 12 cubic meters per hour, and I use in this one pump, my shaft power is 1.9 kilowatts. The shaft power is not the motor size. The motor's nominal size is, needs to be higher or equal to the maximal shaft power of your system. Of course, that when we are talking about big project, we never use the same shaft power as the motor size. Uh, when we need to comply with API or something like that, you have specific margins to be, to be considered or, com or comply with. Here, in this case, the vendor uh, considered the motor size, 
the green line is the motor size is 3 CV as the maximum shaft power. Okay, so you can see here the motor size is 3, but for this point of the curve, I will not consume 3 CV, I will consume around 2.5 CV. And finally, we have the pump efficiency. So as I told you, in this pump, for instance, and when we, are talk when we talk about smaller pump, sometimes the suppliers add the pump efficiency already uh, considering the motor efficiency. And at this point, we have around 45, 48 uh, percent of pump efficiency. So if we use this information and, uh, uh, and feed this information to the Aspen High Seas, you are able to get this power based on this information of head, uh, of flow, and of efficiency, and verify that everything is, is talking to each other. Okay, so you get the specification sent to the, the, to the vendor. The vendor will reply to you with a technical eco, uh, economical proposal. And one of the documentation that must be available to you is the pump curve. The pump curve, you will verify the, vol, the, the flow in head. You will verify the NPS age required. You will verify the shaft power needed to your pump, and you will verify the pump efficiency. No, uh, if you are doing projects in the oil and gas industry, most often you will need to comply with the API 610. There, there is some requirements to pump sizing and selection. For instance, it talks about the best efficiency point. You can see that here in this documentation, there is no uh, mention to the best efficiency point because it's not following the API 610. And uh, you will find it in the Vijay Sarat uh, paper. Most often, the API recommends uh, that your pump runs or operates between uh, 90 and 110% of the, your best efficiency point or BEP of your pump curve. So to be able to do that, you need a pump curve that talks to you where is the BEP. And the BEP is the highest efficiency of the pump.